Welcome Taurus. Hello. This is going to be a reading from May 8th to May 14th, 2020. Please like and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. Thank you to all my subscribers. I reached 800 before May 1st, so that makes me really, really happy. Thank you so much. So there's no way this can connect with every single Taurus out there. So if it doesn't connect, don't force it to. The masculine and feminine energies can be vice versa. So I've, uh, what else? So the challenge for the month of May was for you to look on your birth chart and find your north node. Your north node is going to be your challenges while you're here on earth. So it's pretty interesting. See what house your north node is in and then Google that house and what the, it, favors, all that kind of stuff, and read about that house, and keep that in your little journal about your birth chart, so you can reference back to that if you need to, but that's pretty interesting about the North Node, so that's another thing. Um, here we go. Almost done. I shuffle all the cards before I ever turn the camera on. So I'm going to start with the Whispers of the Ocean Oracle cards for you. And the first one is Mutually Beneficial Venture. There is an extraordinary connection at the forefront of your life at this moment. Utilize this relationship to benefit everyone concerned. So that was 31, correct? Okay. So close. Deepen your awareness of a relationship which may be a romantic love, a friendship, or a business association. This card indicates that the spirit of cooperation and mutual interest supports this connection. Make sure you are doing whatever is necessary to foster better communication and to strengthen what is already in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Clownfish and sea enemies have a special relationship. Sea enemies can paralyze and kill their prey with their stinging tentacles, but clownfish are protected from their venom. Clownfish have mucus on their skin that keeps them from feeling the sting of the tentacles. The clownfish live in partnership with certain species of enemies and shelter among their numerous tentacles. The clownfish are protected from their predators and in turn keep some harmful elements from the enemy. So I feel like you may have somebody that you you really mutually benefit from almost like a barter situation is what I'm picking up or maybe that works for you maybe you're good at that type of thing so the next one is 22 take note your answers are being given to you quieting external voices and excessive noise will give you the chance to hear what is being offered so something is being offered this is a double number which are pretty important. I like a lot of numbers, but this is a good one. Take a moment to really hear what is being said. Put aside any preconceptions and allow yourself to imagine a new approach to this situation. Stepping back and paying attention in this way will enhance your inner voice and bring new insight. You can honor stillness while listening to others. By doing this, you will create better relationships and allow your inner light and love to shine out towards others as a means of communication. You may find it easier to feel this in your body. The Hawaiian monk seal is the only seal native to Hawaii. It is currently an endangered species. Monk seals are agile and sleek in the water. They are very curious. Listen to your inner voice or intuition and follow the guidance you are receiving. So mutually beneficial venture. So yeah, and take note. And then third one for the whispers of the ocean. 50. Childlike devotion. You are a multi-talented, complex being. Embrace and love who you are. 50. I believe this is the last card in the deck. This is. Love includes both acceptance and respect. Love is the essence of the situation at hand. Making a shift into greater love of self will bring you more love from others. The truth is that you will receive more love than you are able to accept the love that is given to you. 
The love coming into your life may or may not be romantic love. Look for ways in which you can begin to connect with others. Allow your emotion to become evident. Be open to living more from your heart and experiencing your dreams. Consider the joy you felt as a young child around holidays or special occasions. Recall how you knew what you longed for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of course, your aspirations have changed, but you can insistently pursue your ideas just as you did as a child. And that's a Christmas rasp fish. They're hard to see, but when you see them, it's really a beautiful thing, is what the book says. So now I'm switching over to the Mystical Cats Tarot deck for you, Taurus. And wow, this is coming out as the first card for so many of my readings. Five of Earth. Five of Earth is loneliness. You feel left out, out in the cold, like you're not with everyone else. Six of fire is selfishness, so I feel like you feel left out and you feel like somebody around you is being selfish, Taurus. Nine of C. This is you dreaming of your future, and this is a good card. This is my affirmation card that good luck is coming to you because it has the flying fish, which is a good, good omen or whatever, if you will, to me. It has the gold cat toy down here with the feathers, which are gold and feathers are good. The emotions. So yes, this is an abundance card that you're on the right path, that good things are coming to you. Three of fire. So you're asking the divine, the universe, why this is going on. You don't understand. You're asking Six of Sky. Six of Sky is you removing yourself from lower energies, people being dramatic, causing issues, being annoying. Lovers. This could be Gemini around you. Gemini placement in your birth chart or around you, Taurus. But it speaks for itself, lovers. So I don't know if a lover's coming in. The wheel. This is a new beginning, something new, like a whole new cycle. This is a new next few months, a new year, or a couple years. So whatever's coming into you, I would say in the next two to three months, is going to be in your life for a while. So pay attention to what's coming in. Four of Sky. Four of Sky is you going, retreating from the rest of the world and going by yourself to sleep maybe cry and uh, just try and heal. Just try and heal yourself. You heal from being by yourself. Five of Fire. This is again is bickering, drama, annoying, immaturity. This is a hermit. This could represent a Virgo placement in your birth chart or a Virgo around you. If not, this represents clarity. So it means you're going to get the answer to something. Something that you are confused about is just going to come to you. It's just going to be like, oh, now I know what this, how to deal with this. Fire King. So this has to do with pride and ego. Something to do with your pride. Hierophant. Hierophant is a couple things. This is really a lot of things. This could be, first of all, two people trying to communicate through their third eye to each other, or one trying to communicate to the other. It could also represent a judge, a lawyer, a police, a doctor, a court. This is like the authority card, but it also all the cards have a couple meanings. So this is authority or intuition. And intuition at a high level. And authority at a high level, basically. Uh oh, and look at that. I pulled the wrong card. I pulled the Chakra Wisdom deck. Wow, that's so weird when I do that. So now I'm going to switch over to the other side. Sorry about that. And the Empress. So this means that you have somehow forgiven yourself for something. Or you need to. That's so weird. Okay, and then Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups is to do with luxury. You feeling beautiful, you feeling content, you feeling like you are in luxury. 
four of coins. You're putting your guard up around your heart. You kind of feel vulnerable for some reason and fearful, if you will. So you're putting your guard up, protecting yourself a little. You might not even notice you're doing that. It's so, it's so slight, but it's there. Whether you saw a red flag, almost, is what I'm picking up, or just the situation that you're in is making you more closed off. Queen of Wands, somebody who has opportunities, somebody who knows her self-worth, and somebody who... She's, she has intuition and she's kind of forward, so I could see if you're with the Queen of Wands, maybe you are vulnerable, you feel vulnerable because she's so forward. Seven of Cups is reflection on something in the past that is long, long time ago. You shouldn't even be wasting time or energy on something that long ago. Really. Ten of Wands is you dealing with something that fast action communication chakra so something you're doing you are ready to move on with something there's one thing you have left to do before you move into happiness six of wands is victory and success over lower energies gossip lies, that sort of thing that people have talked about you, you have success over that, Taurus. Seven of Wands, this is you doing a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking. You might have a lot of people that want to date you, but you have been going inside your head a lot, and there's one certain person I feel like you cannot let go of, that you cannot break away from. A lot of thoughts, and a lot of people possibly want to date you, or you're reflecting on a lot of people you've dated. Five of Coins. Five of Coins is you possibly getting ghosted, left behind, and things didn't work out, and somebody moved away. And it was somebody you were with for a while. Ten of Swords. It broke your heart. You were tired. You couldn't do it anymore. The Hanged Woman. So there's a delay in something right now. Some sort of delay you're waiting on. Six of Coins. Good karma is coming to you because you've good, good, you have put good karma back out into the universe. Four of Wands. Wow. So this is my marriage card. So Ten of Swords. Something ended. The Hanged Woman, the universe is uh, giving you something in good time, the good six of coins, good um, karma coming to you, and then the marriage card. Nice, Taurus. Seven of coins is you again doing a lot of thinking, you're organizing, planning, reorganizing, replanning, you're going over your coins. King of Wands. King of Wands is a lot of opportunities. This is somebody who can wear many hats. He could be an entrepreneur. He's romantic. He's boss-like without being too boss-like. He's not the emperor boss. He's like a, um, a, a good boss, <laughs> all I could say. He generally cares for his employees. Three of Cups is peace and harmony in your home life. Oh no, I forgot to set the timer. Oh wait, no I didn't. Okay. And then you have Eight of Swords. This is self-blame and sabotage. So don't self-blame yourself. Don't sabotage yourself. Don't do that. The next one is Ace of Swords. You are cutting something out of your life, Taurus. Somebody was spying too, a lot of spying, a lot of negativity, trying to hurt your um, identity, I feel. And you're going to cut that person out. You're done. So you have Eight of Swords, or maybe you're going to cut out your self-sabotage. You could be doing that, and that would be good. 
Two of Wands is you make a decision, and the decision you make does not concern just you, it concerns other people. And if you're worried and stressed, you're going to make the right decision. But yeah, looking back at that. So justice, everything's going to balance out. The universe will balance it out. There's some yin and yang situation I feel like you're kind of stressed about. It's going to work out. Princess of Wands. This is somebody who is protected by the divine because the stag is in the picture. And this is new beginnings with those butterflies. And this is loyalty, honesty, pureness, naiveness almost. This is somebody very young, very naive. So Eight of Coins is you planning accordingly, figuring out your money situation again. So I'm going to switch to the Soul's Journey Lesson Cards, and you have Discipline. I can accomplish what I set my mind to. And that's nice, Discipline. So let me find it. Even though we all kind of have an idea. Your soul has a goal, but it also has chosen to incarnate into a world of distractions. Earth is a dimension of obstacles and challenges, but you have been given Discipline as your birthright. It is time to remind yourself that your soul has come back to the planet to learn. Distractions can easily get us off the work of our soul, and if we give in to this impulse, we can miss many well-placed pre-planned teachings needed for our inherent growth. So discipline. So discipline yourself to go for what you want and what you know. So the next one is humor. I choose to focus on the lighter side of life. Taurus, is it you? It's totally you. So let me find humor. Here it is. And I believe on the 7th, when is this coming out? Is the full moon. And the 7th is also um, Ves Vesic Day, I believe it is. Or Buddha Day. So there are definitely parts of life that require your serious attention, but you have to learn to have fun. Don't neglect things that bring you joy or make you laugh. Besides the health benefits to your physical body, your emotional, mental body heap reap huge rewards from the art of joy. People seek out the people who make you feel good about being alive. Avoid synonym and pessimism. Always look at your cup as being half full instead of half empty. Discipline and humor. Nice. So now I switched my deck over. I took the Fantasy Cats Oracle deck out for a little while. And I brought the Angel and Ancestor Oracle cards in to replace them because I felt like these were more appropriate. So the first one for you is Hunter. Track down your fears and desires. That almost looks like a Taurus, doesn't it? So, Hunter. Let me find this because I haven't used this for a while and it's all different. I might have to put this down. Oh, I found it. Very good. So, here's what it says. Track down your fears and desires. When you find them, you will find your desires too. Instead of being hunted down by your fears or other feelings that you have buried, become the hunter. You are being given confidence and strength at this time, so use your power to make a difference. You are not here to cower away and live in the shadows. You are here to realize your fullest potential. But this can only occur when you step up and do what needs to be done. When this card arises, there could be an opportunity to face an aspect of what your past or bring closure to a situation that has been haunting you. And the next one for you is Snake, Shed Old Skin. This is probably really heavy to a lot of people because I know a lot of people don't like s uh, snakes. Okay. Cast off the old. Reveal your true colors, talents, and gifts to the world. The energy of renewal is washing over your life is at this time. If for some reason you feel that your true self hasn't been recognized or you have been misread by others, know this energy is now leaving you. As you've been working through your old stories and all the sh shelf 
limiting beliefs that you have accumulated along the way, you have been peeling away a shield of skin that has created limiting experiences. This is a time for renewal, abundance, and connection. Let yourself be reborn and celebrated. That's nice. Okay, so now I'm going to finish off with the fortune cookie. I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I guess I'm not. And I have the love fortune in here, so let's see what comes out for you, Taurus. Yours says, The heart is wiser than the intellect. Chinese saying. The heart is wiser than the intellect. All right, thank you so much, Taurus. I hope this helps you out. Thank you, Taurus Crosswatchers, all the subscribers. Bless you.